Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for a brand new video and today, brothers, it is finally here, every single hero and villain ranked from worst to best in Star Wars Battlefront 2. I have been talking about updating this video for a really long time because pretty much every single hero and villain on this list has changed drastically from the last time I did a video like this and honestly some of my own rankings surprised me while putting this together. I am really considering making this type of video a weekly series so I could do a video ranking every map, blaster, reinforcement, trooper class, hero, starfighter, whatever, and release a video ranking one of those things each weekend. But I'm only going to do that if you guys want to see it. So if you would like to see more videos like this one, leave a like on this video. And if I see enough of you interested in making these videos a full on series, I will get working on a video ranking every blaster in Battlefront 2 for next weekend. Before we jump into the actual rankings, I want to say a huge thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video, and we are going to talk about their awesome products somewhere near the middle of this upload, but for now let's just jump right into the hero list. And starting out our list at the very bottom, we have Chewbacca. Poor, poor Chewbacca, he used to be the most hated hero in the game because he was pretty broken in HVV. His shot grenade had a very quick recharge time with a really long stun, and his furious bowcaster could 3 shot a full health Darth Vader. However, even when he was overpowered in HVV, he was still pretty weak in Galactic Assault. Well, over time, DICE has nerfed Chewbacca again and again, to the point where he's at best a middling hero in HVV, and in Galactic Assault and Capital Supremacy, he is by a pretty large margin the worst hero. His health on kill star card requires him to get charge slam kills, an ability that is borderline suicidal if you're playing against even a somewhat competent team, and Chewbacca is just not well equipped for killing multiple enemies at once, something that is required of heroes quite often, especially in large scale game modes. Statistically, his bowcaster also just cannot compete with other hero blasters. Chewie does have a solid loadout for killing villains in a 1v1, but when his Furious Bowcaster is on cooldown, he is pretty much a dead Wookiee walking, and he comes in at dead last. The lead hero designer has said many times over the past few months, the team is aware they have over nerfed Chewbacca and are working on a solution, and I can only hope they figure out something soon, because Chewie is in a sorry state at the moment. At our number 19 spot we have Finn, and already we are getting into heroes that do have a place within the battlefront, but overall just have many many weaknesses. Finn when he was first released was very solid. His Deadeye and Blaster damage were great, and that's what really really carried him as his other abilities have problems that we will get into. Well, DICE did decide to nerf the best thing about Finn only a few weeks after release, and despite DICE giving his regular Blaster a small buff with the last update, he's never really been the same. Big Deal is absolutely amazing for your teammates sake, but the very drastic movement penalty makes Finn an incredibly easy target, especially in heroes versus villains, and unless you have a full team protecting you, Finn is often a free kill in HVV. His undercover team is nice for getting behind a team, but again unless you have several teammates with you, getting behind a team is not going to take you very far for Finn, as he just doesn't have an ability to clear a room without help unless the enemies are just awful and not paying attention. His health on kill card is also currently tied to his pistol, which can only be used with undercover team, which puts him at a huge disadvantage when compared to other heroes. Finn is a great asset to teammates who will actually support him, but those type of players are far and few between, and overall there are just much better choices when it comes to the light side. Moving on to the number 18 spot, and we are already past the two heroes that need drastic changes, we have Captain Phasma, and what is there to say about Phasma that I haven't said in the past? When she is in a situation that suits her playstyle, Phasma is pretty unstoppable. The issue is, the situations that suit Phasma are pretty rare in Battlefront 2. Phasma is very, very, very reliant on camping on her droid with the support of teammates. In Heroes vs Villains, if your teammates refuse to camp with you, which I wouldn't blame them because in my opinion it's not a very fun way to play, Phasma is just going to spend a lot of time out of the action. Now if you do have a full team sitting on the droid with you, your team is going to be pretty much unstoppable in HVV, but again unless you're playing with friends that is not going to happen very often, and I just don't enjoy playing like that. In Galactic Assault she is pretty decent at locking down an objective, but the truth is there are a lot of heroes that can do exactly that just as well without having to sit on a droid with a long recharge. Her health on kill card is also currently locked to her staff strikes, which makes that card essentially useless. I will say this, if this video was made before the most recent patch that buffed her blaster damage, I would have ranked her under Finn, but her blaster is now decent enough to take people on without guaranteeing a huge loss of health. It used to be much much weaker. 
Phasma is very situational and most of what she is good at just can be done by other heroes without being restricted by an immobile ability with a long long cooldown. Soldiering on to our number 17 spot, and this is what is weird about these videos, is even at 17 we are already into very solid hero territory. And at number 17 we have Leia. Let's start out with what is great about Leia. Her pistol is amazing, probably the most underrated weapon in the game, as if you can track your shots it absolutely shreds enemies who can't block you. Her health regeneration is also amazing, and her E11 is great as well, another great way to shred enemies that aren't able to block. Well, what is bad about Leia? Her shield is close to useless in this game, in HVV it's among one of the most useless abilities in the entire game, and in Galactic Assault other than the occasional shield over objective to save the day, it's going to accomplish very very little as it can't be shot through. Her flashbang is also pretty pathetic for a hero ability, I know whenever I'm hit with it it just doesn't really phase me, just block for 2 seconds until it's over. It's pretty telling when the officer's flashbang is way stronger than Leia's, Leia's secondary fire which used to be her biggest strength has been nerfed pretty hard, and other than on the first phase of Crate and Hoth, and a couple of other select sections of maps, overall Leia just needs a lot of help. I still really enjoy using her overall, but she just isn't on the same level as the heroes that are coming up next. Moving on to number 16 we have Lando, a hero that a few months ago would have ranked a quite a bit higher. But Lando, more than anyone else, was hit pretty hard by the huge nerfs to stuns a few months back, and combine that with the roll nerf, he just isn't quite as strong as he once was. When I'm playing as Lando, I still find him to be perfectly solid, his shot grenade allows you to get a decent amount of health away from players who don't know how to counter it, and his blaster up close can deal some solid damage if you land your headshots. That being said, Lando is pretty reliant on his stun if up against decent enemies, and his disabler has a long long cooldown. His smoke grenade is also a very very weak ability with limited use, and when I'm playing against Lando players, with very very few exceptions, I find him to be a really easy kill. His disabler is easily countered by most force users by just jumping as he activates it, which mitigates the vast majority of the potential damage, and most Landos are absolute toast if they allow you to get up close, and even solid Lando players are no match for a really good Vader, Kylo, Maul, Boba, or Bosk. In Galactic Assault, Lando is pretty situational. If you can set up with a sharp shot, yeah, you are going to be racking up free kills all day long, but in close quarter situations with multiple enemies, there are way better choices out there. Continuing on, General Grievous takes our number 15 spot, and the only people this will surprise are people that haven't played Battlefront 2 as of late. General Grievous has taken a massive hit lately, and any player who has actively been playing Battlefront 2 has been getting increasingly frustrated with what DICE has decided to do with Grievous. First things first, as far as bugs go, Grievous is arguably in a worse state than he was when he was first released, his claw rush used to work perfectly, and now it's in a very sorry state. Grievous will consistently get stuck in the animation, get lodged right into the ground and die, or just come out of claw rush at the worst time for absolutely no reason, leaving him very very vulnerable. His thrust surge, an ability that was completely broken, and then was fixed for like 2 months, and now is broken again, works maybe a third of the time, making it wildly unpredictable. Many times you will lock on, do a bizarre helicopter spin, and just do nothing, leaving you exposed the entire time. Ironically, Unrelenting Advance, by far the most broken ability when Grievous first released, is the only ability that still currently works properly, although the ability is pretty situational. But that's not all, as the changes to stamina took a huge toll on Grievous, you used to be able to attack constantly, even when out of stamina. The only thing stamina used to change was whether or not you could block, and the lock on of your sabers. Well, DICE did change that, so once lightsaber heroes are out of stamina, they just cannot attack at all. For some heroes, this didn't really change a whole lot. For Grievous, well, it devastated his power. Grievous excelled because his Sith trained star card allowed him to one-shot troopers, but it made his stamina deplete 40% faster, and Grievous, from the get-go, didn't have a lot of stamina. Without that star card, it took him two hits to kill any trooper, and while that is okay for some heroes, DICE designed Grievous with this card in mind so they made his swing speed very very slow to mitigate that. So now Grievous is just in a bad spot with these stamina updates. With the card he can now only swing a few times with high damage before completely running out of stamina and being left unable to block or attack, or he can swing a few more times, but very very slowly with average damage that is outclassed by pretty much every hero with swing speed and damage. Grievous really needs some help, and while he is still in a very solid place when he works because his abilities can be ridiculous when they have a consistent game, he is in rough shape compared to his glory days. At our number 14 spot, we have Aiden Versio, and I almost ranked her a little higher, but once I saw her competition, I realized I just couldn't do it, as what is coming next is so, so strong. 
Aiden is a great hero who really doesn't need many or any changes, so I don't have a ton to say about her. Her TL50 is a very strong blaster, and the alternate fire is incredible in a lot of situations. Her droid is also amazing, although that will be getting hit with a nerf soon, unfortunately, but of course I didn't take that into account for this video. Her shield is also very solid for avoiding damage. Her pulse cannon is pretty meh, only because she's so much better when she's up close. Aiden does struggle if she gets cornered by more than like one competent hero, but luckily competent players are a rare thing in HVV, so it's not a problem too often. Yeah, overall, I just love Aiden. She is a solid hero, but I couldn't justify ranking her any higher. Moving on, we have the meme lord himself, General Obi-Wan Kenobi, and with Obi-Wan, DICE did a great job of making a very defensive hero, which is exactly what Obi-Wan should be. He's definitely not the flashiest hero, not even close. He's not meant to go rushing in like an idiot spamming attacks. If you do that, you are not going to have a very good time with Obi-Wan, even if you can get away with it with certain other heroes. Where Obi-Wan excels is by using his ridiculous amount of stamina to block enemy heroes, allowing them to drain their stamina, which is, in pretty much every situation, far lower than his, and after they've depleted their stamina, using your mind trick and wrecking their day. Like I said, Obi-Wan is in a very good place. He's not quite as strong as some of the other heroes on this list, but he is very balanced, and more importantly, unique. DICE has lately been trying to make a lot of heroes very similar to one another, which I don't like, so I hope they allow Obi-Wan to keep his defensive playstyle, because while it may not be the flashiest, most aggressive way of playing, it's unique to him and I enjoy it a lot. Taking our number 12 spot, we have Count Dooku, and before I ranked every hero by number, I put them into categories, and I will tell you guys right now, we are already into the category that I have labeled really solid. Dooku is exactly that, he is very, very solid. He's great at dueling due to his duelist ability that unfortunately is pretty bugged at the moment, although it's not something a lot of people would notice. When duelist is activated, Dooku is supposed to enter a fast set of animations that allows him to deal his damage quicker, and unfortunately if you activate duelist and sprint, dodge, or really do anything other than just stand there and attack, he still gets the damage boost, but unfortunately, that bug does hinder Dooku a bit at the moment. Regardless, he does still get the solid damage boost from Duelist that will outclass most others, and Dooku is usually going to win a 1v1 if Duelist is active, even in its bug state. His lightning stun is also very good, although I do think it needs a slight range buff, and exposed weakness, while very short-lived, is pretty devastating when combined with Duelist. Overall, Dooku is one of the most well-designed heroes in the game, and is balanced well despite a few issues that I'm sure will be addressed soon. At number 11, we have one of my favorite heroes, Han Solo. Han is by far one of the most high-skill, high-reward heroes in the entire game. He is very, very tough to use well, but those who know how to can absolutely dominate. His DL-44 is devastating on unsuspecting enemies, his detonite charge can clear rooms in a heartbeat, and his shoulder charge now breaks blocks again and staggers enemies, which can be great for a last-ditch effort to survive, or just to get some damage in behind a blocking enemy. Han's only real weakness, in my mind, is that his sharpshooter ability restricts his movement way too much for my liking, I wish they would make it the way it was in the previous game, and his shoulder charge does have very limited use in Galactic Assault. Most Hans you come up against are going to suck and be really easy kills, but every once in a while you will come across a Han that is a god tier player, and he will make you question everything you thought you knew about Battlefront 2. And the best Han players always seem to use Han's bearded appearance, which I have never been a huge fan of, because I prefer my Han skins after they've had a great shave, which is why I've always been convinced that Han must use Dollar Shave Club, who have been awesome enough to sponsor today's video, which is actually a really funny story, because when Dollar Shave Club reached out to me asking if I wanted to test out their products for an upcoming video, my first thought was, I already use your products, every single day. Seriously, I have been using Dollar Shave Club for all of my shaving products for over a year now, and I have not looked back since. When I wake up, I shower, try to tame my hair because I have a lot of it, brush my teeth and shave, and while Dollar Shave Club has always been my go-to for convenient shaving products delivered right to my door, I have always wished there was a way to get everything else delivered without me having to think about it, like hair products, toothpaste, everything I need in the morning, and that is when Dollar Shave Club informed me that they now offer a shower and oral starter set in addition to the shave set I've already been using, and they were kind enough to send me out everything to try out for myself. And I have to tell you guys, Every product they offer is amazing. 
What's even better is Dollar Shave Club is almost giving these products away, as you can get your hands on any of these sets for only 5 bucks, and in the past week I have absolutely fallen in love with their black pepper shampoo, because like I said I have a lot of hair to take care of, and it gets the job done really well. You can redeem this awesome $5 offer by going to dollarshaveclub.com slash battlefrontnight, or by clicking the link in the description below if you want to get there even faster. Like I said, I cannot recommend them enough as I've been using them for over a year myself, so a final thank you to Dollar Shave Club. Alright boys, we are officially in the top 10, and starting off our top 10 we have the man, the myth, the legend, Emperor Palpatine. Once removed from Battlefront 2 altogether for being so unbelievably broken that he could single-handedly ruin entire matches, Palpatine is now in a very well-balanced place. I really have zero complaints with Palpatine in his current state, he is exactly where he should be. His Chain Lightning and Dark Aura are awesome abilities, his Electrocute is helpful in HVV, and of course his main attack is very, very strong without being broken as it used to be. Palpatine can be a tough hero to master, I know a lot of people struggle with him, but once you master him, you'll be hooked to his playstyle and unlimited power forever. At number 9, and if you Fett mains have been waiting for Vindication for over a year, here it is as Boba Fett is next on our list. Boba is finally in a good place after a year of turmoil, and if you haven't played the game recently, I think you'd be pretty confused by this rank. With the recent massive buff to his jetpack with the in-air dodges and in-air recovery from attacks, Boba is pretty much impossible to knock out of the sky. Combine that with his new dot reticle sight that makes his EE3 way more effective, and his recent health buff, Boba is now a top tier hero and has quickly become one of my favorites. His rocket barrage is incredible as always, and his only weak link right now is his concussion rocket, which does remain a pretty garbage ability, but his other strengths more than make up for it. Moving onward and upward, we have the hero that is probably my favorite when it comes to the light side, Luke Skywalker, who has slowly and surely went from a very weak hero to one of the very best. What makes Luke so good is something that many don't even realize, and that is his health and stamina regeneration, which is incredibly fast, meaning he only needs a few seconds to recover from anything. This allows him to attack enemies who are still trying to recover themselves, and once you're aware of this and use it to your advantage, you will be the bane of the enemy team's existence from there on out. His force push is of course incredible for pushing heroes over ledges, and one-shotting pretty much every trooper but heavies, and now that his repulse actually works, it's a very, very solid ability. I could gush about how fun Luke is to play all day, but I will spare you and move on. At number 7, we have Rey, who is one of the most slept on heroes these days, and I don't really know why, because she was very popular when the game came out. I know a lot of people just don't think she's as cool as some of the other heroes, but when it comes to base stats, it's undeniable that Rey is a very, very strong hero. Her lightsaber swing speed is one of the fastest in the game, and combine that with insight which boosts her damage and gives her near unlimited stamina, Rey can outswing almost anyone she's attempting to kill. Her dash strike is incredible for clearing out rooms in Galactic Assault with the right star card set up, and wow is her lightsaber tracking ridiculously powerful. I swear her lightsaber has ridiculous range, it will lock onto and kill enemies that are really really far away. If you've ever played Rey and all of a sudden been flung way up into the air, that's why, because her saber locks onto enemies better than any other hero could ever hope to do, and it allows Rey to never really get caught in that situation we've all been in, where an enemy is right in front of us, but for whatever reason our saber just doesn't lock on and goes right through them multiple times, allowing them to take a huge portion of our health. I haven't even mentioned Rey's mind trick, which is unblockable, and most players just have no idea how to counter even though it is pretty easy to counter once you know what you're doing, but that just makes Rey an even stronger hero because most people do not know how to counter mind trick. Rey used to be one of my favorites, now she's not so much just because of all the Clone Wars heroes that I personally enjoy more, but she is definitely still one of the best, and she comes in at number 7. Taking our 6th position, we have Darth Maul, and yeah, if you are seeing a trend, these top positions are going to be dominated by lightsaber heroes. Maul has always been really good, but now that he has a block and a health on kill star card, he is really good. He hasn't been given some of the crazy buffs that some of the other lightsaber heroes have been getting lately, and his lightsaber throw is currently in a really poor place, but when it comes to agility, Maul is pretty much unrivaled. Maul does require a lot of strategy, he is another hero where you can't just spam attacks because he doesn't have the damage output, damage reduction during certain abilities, or just base health to pull that off, but when you figure out when and where to use Maul's abilities, you will be clearing out rooms with ease. He is definitely a top 3 hero in Galactic Assault, and would definitely make the top 10 for HVV, but averages out at our number 6 spot overall. 
All right, people, this is gearing up to be my longest video ever, but if you are still here, get ready for the top five. And starting out at number five itself, we have Grandmaster Yoda. Yoda is just ridiculous now. Not only is he a very hard target to hit four blasters, he has a block that can literally block everything, including lightsabers now, and has a dash attack that can go through blocks three times in a row with a very quick recharge. Combine that with his extremely high health and presence, and yeah, Yoda is just amazing now. He really has no weaknesses other than his swing speed is a little slow for my liking, but that really does very little to hinder him when you are mixing in his dash attacks with those regular swings. I really don't have much more to say about Yoda, he's a little green god and I love him for it. At number 4 we have the only hero that DICE got right from the very beginning, Bosk. If you are questioning this rank, it's only because you haven't used Bosk enough. He has really no weaknesses whatsoever for a blaster hero, and is by far the best of the non-force users. Bosk for one can regenerate his full health no matter what, which in and of itself puts him at a huge advantage over other heroes, and on top of that he has a card that allows him to regen his health instantly while in the middle of a fight which is just insanely powerful. He also has the rare benefit of all of his abilities being really really solid, he doesn't have a single weak link. His proximity mines, grenade launcher, and dioxys grenade are all super super good, and can kill any non-vehicle unit in seconds. His Relby also allows him to snipe people from afar with ease, and honestly, Bosk is just an incredibly well-designed hero. He is equipped for literally any situation you throw at him, and he is also one of the only blaster heroes that has no problem dealing with multiple lightsaber heroes at once, because his mines, dioxys, and grenade launcher can take care of them with ease. If you have been sleeping on Bosk, you cut that out immediately, but if not, keep fighting the good fight. Moving on to number 3, we have my favorite dark side saber user, Kylo Ren, who, wow, talk about a comeback story. Kylo used to suck so hard, but now that his frenzy is amazing, his pull and freeze are as good as they ever were, and he has a health on kill star card, Kylo is unstoppable. His frenzy can wipe out heroes so quickly I almost feel bad about it sometimes, and the fact that it breaks through blocks is honestly so fun, but I'm sure kind of frustrating for people having to deal with me. Like I said, his freeze and pull have always been great, but once they made his frenzy actually reliable, gave it a damage reduction and jacked up the damage as well, Kylo went from a heap of trash to a literal god, and lately I've been unable to have as much fun using any other hero, he is just that good, and with great reason takes our number 3 position. At number 2 we have Anakin Skywalker, and yeah, wow, this dude has taken a beating over the past few months. When he released, he was unbelievably powerful, it was like DICE collectively had one fourth of a brain cell firing between the entire studio when they designed him, and just pushed him out and made him lie without a second thought. Well, after a series of pretty hard nerfs, Anakin is still a top tier hero, his health is very solid, his swing speed is really fast, his lightsaber damage is higher than almost everyone else, he has a really fast movement speed, and his main three abilities are all very very powerful and really really useful. Heroic Mike can clear a room without a second thought, Pull Dominance is just a better version of Kylo's pull, and his Passionate Strike breaks through blocks with ease. That's not even to mention Retribution, which is the only part of Anakin's kit I do still think needs to be tweaked. And luckily the devs have confirmed that that will be happening soon. Yeah, overall Anakin is a great hero without really a single weakness, he's better at pretty much everything than most other heroes, all but one. And taking the top position on today's list, we have the artist formerly known as Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, and this was a close call, I will tell you that right now, and on top of just not wanting to give the top spot to Anakin, Vader really is a stronger overall hero at this point, without having features that are overpowered or broken. Vader has no weaknesses, his health is incredibly high, that goes without saying, his lightsaber throw, focused rage, and force choke are all incredible abilities, and his swing speed and damage output are both very, very strong. I love that Vader is great without being broken. The only weaknesses Vader had, which were his stamina and his vulnerability during his force choke, have both been obliterated with the most recent patch, as he just received a massive stamina buff and a damage reduction during force choke. Darth Vader managed to hang onto the crown by the skin of his teeth, and remains our number one hero or villain in Battlefront 2. Well guys, that is going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see this type of video turn into a weekly series, be sure to drop this video a like, and if you are new to the channel, make absolutely sure you subscribe, as we would be honored if you would join us. Once again, thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video, and thank all of you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.